Hi everyone, I'm going to make an art journal page and I'm thinking something like steampunk and I'm starting by gluing this down this is at least it, to me it looks like it, some kind of tissue paper uh, or uh, tissue paper or uh, parchment paper brought in together I'm going to glue this down with white glue uh, if I remember correctly, I got this from uh, in Happy Mail from Mikey, which I hope I, I still don't know if I uh, pronounce it uh, as I should. It was it's M I E K E, so I'm sorry if it's not uh, how it should be pronounced. So just putting down glue and that's gonna be my first layer and I'm gonna use some uh, colors that I'm not used to I'm planning on oranges and red and brown and we'll see how it goes as, as you know I'm always starting with something and never know what uh, will come out of it and I've placed my paper uh, not in place because I can't have it going all over here so messy 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 never mind never mind the wrinkles I like wrinkles just I can't have it covering here here we go saved it <laughs> okay leaving it to dry so I wanted to do a butterfly for this steampunk and of course with steampunk uh, it's not the regular butterf butterfly, the cutesy one that we are always doing, no matter with what technique. And I thought, how can I make my butterfly a uh, more interesting for this uh, steampunk uh, thing that I'm uh, thinking? And that got me. Uh, I thought I've got all this. Uh, die cuts butterflies that I picked up in IKEA. I am always using them as template. Instead of using them, I'm using them as template. And that that's what where I got the idea. I'm I've taken one of them, traced it on uh, this black paper, and I only uh, traced half of it. And you will see why it just so it will be easier to cut it because uh, if I well I'll show you what I'm doing instead of trying to put everything into words that sometimes I just don't have I just uh, uh, folded it in the middle and now it's easy to cut out to fussy cut the shape of the butterfly and I'm using nail uh, scissors it's easier to fussy cut with them and I'm using the curve of the scissors for the fussy cutting here we go I'm not uh, trying to be accurate right now, I just want to show you why I'm <laughs> to do it and show you w what's the reason behind this uh, kind of thing. So my uh, paper was uh, already with a cut here, so it's a little bit of a problem, but I'll put something just so you'll see what I'm doing. But basically what I've done is, let's see. If I got it cello tape. Yeah. It just had to be in the middle of a video, of course. 
here we go so basically I wanted a window of a butterfly and you you don't have to do the antennas and what why did I do this because I wanted an interesting butterfly and I just wanted to start going through a uh, things I have and see what kind of butterfly do I want like something uh, that I have like this or if I want to take some of my uh, scrapbook uh, paper like so one of those and see what do I like and I wanted it to be unusual for this kind of a project so this helps you to pick up a uh, whatever you want it gives you a focus on what you're going to get when you uh, trace it and cut it like and it doesn't have to be a butterfly it can be a, a circle I can go around any paper any design and decide how, how what I want so that's what I've done and I've picked a postcard that I've uh, bought somewhere and here is the butterfly that uh, is going to be on my page and it has lots of uh, locks I think uh, on the background and that's what I'm going to use now while I'm I was doing <laughs> this this stuff and tracing it on the black paper I had another idea just so you will know I traced this three uh, butterflies on this A4 uh, black paper and I'm thinking I'm going to uh, cut them out like I did here and use this on a page I'm gonna go wild on another page with some kind of white background and then glue down this page a mask so leaving uh, I'm moving this aside for now and I want to continue with my butterfly my butterfly is the focal point of this uh, project and I still want to add something to it and I'm going again into my uh, what I call schmonces <laughs> all these bits and bobs of stuff uh, earrings from the 80s other kinds of uh, beads from the 70s and just playing around and seeing what I can add like I can go all cogs here uh, to add to my uh, butterfly something like that so I'm gonna play around with all these bits and pieces and knickknacks maybe knickknacks better term for it and I'll be back I'm back so I assembled uh, some uh, cogs or wheels uh, to glue down to my uh, butterfly and uh, I'm using this uh, glue it's something a uh, local uh, local brand and it just says for it's uh, generally for art and by the potent smell of it I can tell you I think it's similar to is a thick six thousand so that's the only thing I can tell you about it and that's what I'm using here and at first I thought I was trying to find a cox that would be uh, the same on the each side but then I figured that it would be more interesting if it won't be symmetrical so that's what I'm going for here just something that I would like and it doesn't have to be symmetrical
go. Oops. And I think I need to put some pressure on it. And I want to change this because it does look symmetrical now. And let's see what else I can use. Oh, that's too much. Here we go. I'll use this one. Changing another one. There we go. Okay. So this needs to dry, and haven't used it uh, yet, so I don't know how much time it will take. But I do know I don't want it to move, so I'm going to put it under something like a book, so there will be pressure on it. Let's see. Where is a book when I need one? Okay. Finished with this. And this is still uh, not completely dry. So I'll be back and then I'll start on the background. So I'm back and I'm going uh, to start with the background. I've got here uh, acrylic paints, uh, sepia brown, scarlet red and some kind of orange. Uh, everything is a local brand so <laughs> that's what I have. And I'm just starting with the middle with the orange and now adding from the red and I'm trying to blend everything in and I'm just going to add and smear, add and smear until I've got what I want and this is not what I want I need to do something else, let's see maybe I need to use the orange let it a little bit and then add the red yeah I want it more intense like this and now I'm going with the red and trying to is up to it I don't know how to explain it just go all the way outside and we'll see I can add the uh, brown at last just to bring everything else in The orange is not bright enough as I want it, so I'm going to try and add more. I really like the paper on the background, but I want to push it into the background. I don't it, want it too prominent on my page. So I'll just keep adding paint until I achieve what I want to see. Maybe I should have um, gessoed on top of the tissue paper before I started with the paint. But, okay. Moving on. <laughs>
Okay, the orange uh, is really what I wanted and now I need to work a little bit on the red. Maybe I need here a sponge and not a baby wipe, let's see. When I'm working with a sponge, I like it a little bit moist. I don't like to work with it uh, completely dry, so just spray it with a little water. That's more like it. Okay. Sometimes you just need to try something else. Oops, I need more water. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want. <laughs> now, very, very carefully, the brown. starting to take shape to look more like what I had in, in mind That's what I wanted. So, that's my background, the beginning of it. And I'm going to uh, wash the uh, sponge before uh, it gets spoiled. And let's see a little bit more of the orange here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to wash it and I'll be back. I'm back and I really like this background but I still want to add something to it and I remember that I had this plastic cup from some kind of yogurt that on the bottom uh, it has this shape of a cog. So I'm gonna try, I've got here a um, bronze uh, heavy bodied uh, acrylic and I'm gonna try putting it down gently and I'm gonna try and stamp it on the background and let's see. Okay, it works. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some uh, bronze cogs over my page. Just to add something more. we 
go and maybe just dry brushing here in the corner and also here using my brush dry brush no added water of, or anything kind of framing my page and giving it a little bit of highlight That's it for now, and yeah, here is my butterfly, which I'm going to now uh, glue down. It's kind of heavy, so I'm gonna use again this mixed media, <laughs> at least that's what it says, glue. But I'm telling you, I'm thinking it's E6000, just by the awful smell of it. Here we go. Now I want some bronze splatter. So now adding water and I hope it will work with it because my bronze is really a more like paste than any acrylic I know so let's hope for the best and just adding a little water each time Let's see, I need a fan brush, more water, and let's hope it works. Eh. No, not really. So I need to find something else. I really want some splatter here. That will pop if I'm explaining myself. Maybe I need to use my orange, the orange here that I used for the page. Let's see water. Here we go. Okay, that's what I wanted. In case you're wondering, I had a piece and it was supposed to be the uh, butterfly antennas, but I can't find it. When I find it, I'll attach it to my page. Just don't know where it went. Okay, that's it. I'm stopping now. I really like it. There is too much smear here. 
and yeah I like it like this not going to put anything uh, else here I'm just thinking my uh, butterfly needs some shading so I'm gonna take my Stabilo O put a little bit here and uh, the butterfly like so taking a fine brush and activating it I should have put a little bit more that's it I really like it I hope you liked it and it gives, gave you some ideas what to do uh, thank you for watching thank you for leaving me comments below and I'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now